I believe that this short video could be the end of the debate for many Bible believers on whether or not the Bible is changing. So stay with me. I'm going to start by asking you a simple question. It's a hypothetical scenario. Let's say your name is Joe and you wake up one morning and it's Jim. All your bank statements say it's Jim. All your documents, everybody knows you as Jim. And in my situation that I'm giving you, you're, you don't have mental illness. You're not on drugs. There's no outward influences affecting your mind. Everything's normal. Okay, my question to you would be, would you consider that a phenomenon, a supernatural event, unexplainable? Yes or no? Your name has changed all of a sudden. Is it a supernatural event? Yes or no? If it's no, please post why. But I've asked this to enough people now, and everyone said yes, so I think everyone would agree that that would be a phenomenon. So my question for the unconvinced is this. Why did you answer phenomenon? Why didn't you say misremembering? Because you keep telling us that our testimony that the Bible is changing can easily be explained away by the fact that the human memory is so unreliable. If you really believed that, you wouldn't have answered phenomenon. You would have said, well, I'm just misremembering. Because are you saying that just because you're a little mixed up about what your name is, that you're going to jump to the conclusion that reality is morphing? Because that's what you say to us. See, if you said yes, it would be a phenomenon, then it seems that you are essentially admitting that you believe that the memory is so reliable when it comes to vivid memories that even if you found yourself in a situation where the reality around you was contradicting your memory, which had never happened to you before, by the way, that you would choose your memory. Well, the testimony of, oh, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of devout followers of the Lord Jesus Christ is that not all, but some scriptures that we remember, as vivid as our names, are changing. And no one in the unconvinced crowd has any way of measuring how much certainty that any of us have regarding this. It says that in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of a man which is in him? Now, for many people listening to my voice, the scripture, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away, is as vivid as our names. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away has never existed. It has always been the Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Now, if that does not knock you off your chair, then I don't, I just think you're bewitched. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away has never existed. Now, if you're new to this, don't worry about the Bible can't change doctrine because it's wrong. And that means that God is not a liar if this is happening. And also, the idea that the devil doesn't have that much power is also wrong. Of course he doesn't. Unless God gives it to him, which he is, and God is going to allow unimaginable things in the tribulation, is he not? So why is this so hard for Christians to accept? The proof texts that are being used by the unconvinced to demand that the scriptures can't change are being misapplied. There isn't one translation that has ever stated the words, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. It's not in the Cambridge 1611, so it's not a modernization issue. It's not in your mom's Gutenberg up in the attic. And it's not in any translation, so it's not a translation issue. And we're certainly not confused and having implanted thoughts from pop culture or homespun sermons where people are misquoting it and then it's being repeated somehow, because this is happening with hundreds of scriptures, not just one or two. So when you see articles that quote it incorrectly at the top, like this one is, and then they quote it in the bottom the way it is now in the Bible, you're not seeing human error. This is not a mistake that people made and then everyone's picking up on that and then misquoting it. This is an irrational Hail Mary claim by people that haven't lifted a finger to research this topic. This brother here, he's passed away, but he's a devout Christian in his time and wrote a book. 
wrote this book. It's available on Amazon right now. And according to the unconvinced, this gentleman put Job chapter 1, verse 21 on his cover of his book incorrectly. <laughs> Come on. Really? Do you really believe that? Do you really expect us to believe that he made that kind of mistake or somehow did this on purpose? See, I published a book and I paid somebody $2,000 to edit it so it would be free from errors. Then I read it myself about 10 times and I listened to it about six times. So this doesn't happen, especially with the title of the book. No, this is part of the phenomenon. It's what you are looking at is what we call residual evidence. It's somehow remnants of the previous timeline remaining in our timeline. This residual evidence was actually foretold in Daniel 7.25, where it says that the beast would seek to change times and laws. And we believe that term seek indicates that he wouldn't really do such a perfect job of it, because only God does all things well. Hallelujah. But, let me give you a small example of why so many people now are leaving the church over this phenomenon. Here's a video made by a pastor. He's giving a little sermonette in his car. And according to the unconvinced, this pastor managed to, first of all, put the incorrect quote in the title of the video down at the bottom. And then he puts the incorrect quote in the captions, as you'll see. But most importantly, he reads the scripture from the Bible the way it is in the present timeline, but then right after that, he quotes it from memory the way we all remember it. And all of us have watched our pastors do the same thing from the pulpit Sunday after Sunday, where they quote what we vividly remember, but what is not in our Bibles anymore. And we're so appalled that we're pulling our hair out watching this spectacle, and we then approach our pastors and they cut us off, they talk down to us, they tell us we need medication, or we have a demon. I'm not exaggerating. And then we're told just to focus on saving souls and we need to read our Bibles more. So as a result, I have close to 150 new subscribers every month because we can no longer endure what to us amounts to bold-faced lying from our church leaders. Watch this. The Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And that's the truth right there, folks. When you are on the path and you love God and you're doing his will, then he will bless you. But sometimes when we get off that path, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. He can take it back away. And okay. Read it from the Bible and then 12 seconds later, quote it the way all of humanity remembers it. The idea that our testimony can be explained by mistakes that people made on 50 different scriptures, and that it's somehow repeated enough to overcome all the influences of our Bible reading and Bible studies and church attendance is patently ridiculous. And here's the proof that that's total nonsense. Here's two of hundreds of examples of residual evidence where these products supposedly, according to the unconvinced, were able to go to market with these glaring mistakes on them. So this first one is a sneaker with the quote from Star Wars incorrectly displayed on the side of the box saying, Luke, I'm your father, which of course he never said that in the movie in this timeline. Now, in my career as a sales and marketing professional, I personally paid for display ads many, many times, thousands of dollars. And I can tell you for sure the painstaking process that you go through to ensure that the ads are correct. So this, what you see here, would have to have gone through the writer making the error, the editor, the copy editor, who knows how many levels of quality control before being printed on the box. Well, here you have a greeting card that was brought to market by not one transnational company, but two Disney and Hallmark both have their logos emblazoned on this greeting card. At the bottom, you can clearly see the words mirror, mirror on the wall, which has never existed. It's always been magic mirror. The top you see Hallmark and then at the side you see Disney. 
So we're being asked to believe that both Disney and Hallmark are so incompetent that they allowed this to go to market. And don't even try to suggest that this is Photoshop, because first of all, you have no proof for that baseless accusation. And secondly, we have plenty of physical examples of these in our possession as well. So it's not just things on the internet. So you're just wrong about this. You're wrong on so many levels. You're on the wrong side of history, and the entire body of Christ is going to hear about this because that's what God's leading me to do. So the idea that we're just confused by mistakes from pop culture is ridiculous because here you have two transnational companies that were supposedly unable to notice that the quote was incorrect after going through uh, upon layer upon layer of editing and copyright checking. How could you explain hundreds of these? Not just this one. Hundreds of them. It's not possible. And the unconvinced are going to have to deal with the fact that their doctrine is wrong about the Bible changing. And they're going to have to face God for their treachery and their treasonous decision to conceal this event from their followers. For whatever reasons. To protect their financial security and their pet doctrines or their fears. It's really appalling. Now, another ridiculous assertion that the unconvinced are using to try to explain all of our testimonies is that we're biblically illiterate. Well, first of all, you have no idea how biblically literate we are or not. And it wouldn't matter anyway, because you can still have a very vivid memory, even if you are biblically illiterate. But Here's just two examples of notable figures that seem to dispel this argument. The first is Dr. Scott Johnson, who has a very large online ministry called Contending for Truth with a huge mailing list. And if you listen to him and you look at the sheer volume of content that this man has produced, I don't think you can claim that he's biblically literate. <laughs> That's for sure. He's a very conservative, orthodox Baptist pastor. And then, of course... We have my good friend, Dr. Paul Grafton Holt, who is the author of 12 theological books, including a book entitled The King James Bible and the Quantum Effect. <laughs> I don't think you could claim that Dr. Holt is biblically illiterate, dear soul, and he most certainly is testifying that the Bible's changing. He's written a book about it. He's even signed uh, my affidavit for church leaders, influencers, and pastors testifying to the fact that this is a real phenomenon. So what's happening is there's an end times phenomenon that was clearly prophesied. It's taking place right under the nose of your pastor, Christian, and you need to confront them with this evidence that we're providing for you. Okay, one of the things you can resource is I created a website called hardestbiblequiz.com hardestbiblequiz.com. There's a 20-question quiz, and then there's a video archive for pastors. You can go there. And now, uh, these scriptures here on the screen are really what I want to finish with. This is so important to understand that uh, we don't believe that these scriptures are teaching that, that the Bible couldn't change. We believe they're saying something very different. I and many others do not hold that the term scripture and the terms word of God are the same thing. We submit that our church leaders have been engaged in a just sloppy doctrine all these years. And God is finally coming in to clean up this mess and restore us to himself. What does the word mean? And what does scripture mean? Well, I believe that to some degree... The Word is what we're told in the Gospel of John, chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Verse 14 then tells us, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Well, that means that Jesus is the Word, whatever that means. And as I thought about it, I was reminded that Jesus constantly said, I do nothing unless I see the Father do it first. He said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So Jesus' narrative was all about obeying the Father. And so God the Father sent the Son 
God sent the word, which was his will. So what is this really saying? I believe it's really saying heaven and earth will pass away, but the will of the Father as expressed in Jesus Christ will not pass away. That's what I believe it really means. It doesn't mean that the terrestrial book or the scriptures which contain the word of God will change. And we contend further that many church leaders have overemphasized the role of scripture in the life of the believer. They've essentially deified the Bible and institutionalized it, and they've become more like lawyers turning the Bible into a system of control, much like what the Pharisees were doing. That's how they did business. So man was not made for the Bible. The Bible was made for man. And I and those in this community are not anti-Bible. We don't have a chip on our shoulder in regards to God. We love God. We walk with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. But we also have a relationship with our own souls. And we're testifying to the world that our assertion, the assertion that's being made against us, essentially, that we're just misremembering, is unfounded, it's irrational, and it is summarily rejected in this video. I give you 15-minute videos with searing logic and evidence that we're not misremembering, and then people just make these snarky posts saying you're misremembering. We're not unreachable, but just repeating over and over that we're misremembering is not going to somehow magically get us to change our minds. How about you do some homework before you start making claims about what is and isn't regarding this issue? Okay, please, and thank you. So... To close out here, if you would uh, like to learn more about walking through this wicked world as a Christian truther, head on over to Wake Up or Else on YouTube, and be sure to check out my book. It's on Amazon. Okay, God bless.